Hello everyone and welcome to a presentation on my doctoral research, an inquiry into the meaning of Dalcrozy rhythmics in the life journey of a student and teacher, an artful autoethnography. I'm in the third year of my studies at Bangor University, North Wales in the UK, as a part-time student. So, a brief background about myself to start and how I arrived at this point in my professional life. I am a Dalcross practitioner. I have taught Dalcross Arrhythmics to all ages and abilities for over 20 years and I am a teacher trainer and examiner of the method internationally. I came across Dalcross Arrhythmics in my 30s, having been a professional violinist for nine years, working in a variety of settings within classical music. Today I continue to teach the violin, applying my knowledge of Dalcrozy rhythmics to my teaching. As you see here, the Dalcroz approach to musical learning, understanding and expression, as established by the Swiss Emile Jacques Dalcroz, involves the body in a holistic way. It has three main branches of study. Literature on the method, such as these two publications, one by Marie-Laure Bachmann, the other by Eva nivbrandt bedin describe an approach that leads to the development of internalization of musical concepts, an effective nervous system, muscular memory, a musical imagination, creativity, spatial awareness, social flexibility and improvisational skills. So this is what others have written about the method. But I was interested, through my research, to find out what personal meaning did I make of my encounter and engagement with the approach. Going back a few years, my journey as a researcher had actually begun in 2013 when I was studying for the Diplôme Supérieur at the Institut Jacques Dalcroze, Geneva. And at the time, researching into my teaching of children with special educational needs. I thought I would share the photo that you see here in the bottom right-hand corner as it shows a nice moment of myself and Hélène Nicolet celebrating our graduation on the same day. Autoethnography as a methodology uses the telling of a personal story, auto, to shed light on a specific culture, ethno. In this case, the culture of music education through Dalcrozy rhythmics. Autoethnography as a methodology is very wide-ranging and open. There is no one-size-fits-all, and it can embrace different writing styles as well as incorporate other art forms, as can be seen in arts-based research. This allows for creative possibilities. Arts-based research uses art forms as means for discovering, describing and understanding human experience. It reveals multiple perspectives on a given phenomenon therefore offering new insights and possibilities for learning. As a means of holding the rich multiplicity of methodologies and disciplines that emerged in my own work, I adopted bricolage as a framework. This multi-layered and multimodal approach to meaning-making and knowledge production is in sympathy with my experience of Dalcrozy rhythmics. Bricolage embraces adaptation, improvisation, a playing around with ideas and modes of thinking and doing. In its original sense of the word, it's creating something new out of readily available or existing materials, a form of DIY. When studying Dalcrozy rhythmics, students are encouraged to develop a cross-art interdisciplinary connection with musical concepts and to find resonances in the natural world and in daily life. These common concepts are known as the Dalcroze subjects. I decided to adopt the subject of anacrusis, crucis and metacrusis as a unifying tool within my doctoral research thesis. As can be demonstrated here with the images of preparing for an action, the point of arrival or the strike and its after effect. This provided a temporal rhythm to the data collection by splitting my life story into early influences, time as a student and my later teaching profession. 
although I should add that later I found myself journeying backwards and forwards between timelines, making connections and relationships within my story, as is often a feature of autethnography. In the attic of my family home, I came across the Shorm keyboard touch finder, a sort of paper cape that was used in my early piano lessons at the start of the 1970s. In the introduction to the book, it's described as, quote, an educational aid that trains students to locate the keys by touch. Fingers are for feeling and finding the keys. Eyes are for seeing and reading the music. One of the essential skills of a Dalcro's teacher is the ability to provide instructions and feedback whilst improvising from your instrument, usually the piano. You have to observe the class whilst finding your ways around the keys, constantly inventing new musical stimuli for movement. So, I'm thankful retrospectively to my piano teacher and to John Shorm for his paper cape and the tactile preparation. I decided to create a performance that is an amalgamation of memories and a contemporary response to the paper cape. And here are some images from the film of the performance. One of the significant moments of my first ever Dalcro's class was being asked to remove my shoes and socks and to take to the open space, amongst a group of strangers, to respond to the music I heard. It was a moment of uncertainty and vulnerability. Up to this point in my life, music had always been about connecting my ear to the hands and the fingers. I didn't have a relationship with my feet. I didn't know them. Later, I reflected on rituals within various cultural contexts and explored tactility, haptics and the experience of otherness in an unfamiliar territory. I made some shoes from different materials as part of the research process to capture my sense of learning to accommodate new technology and forms of knowing. I also made some short films that explore the notion that embodied knowledge is revealed. Knowledge as discovery, as an experiential revelation, is key to Dalcro's pedagogy. Through a process of making, of doing, I was engaging with tactility and the sensorial, and therefore again being true to my Dalcro's practice and identity, whilst grappling with meaning-making within my research. Next, I created a collage of key texts that were influencing my research from various fields, including education, human geography, philosophy, cultural studies, psychology, the arts, sociology and anthropology. They became a literature cape that symbolised the idea of embodying the literature and it formed a rich witness to the interdisciplinarity that can be found within Dalcro studies. Through an improvised movement performance, I communicated the struggle to contain and manage the possibilities available within one study. The cape and the shoes saw the beginning of exploring the craft of stitching. This has become an important feature of my research process. My hand sewing is not tidy or refined. Its purpose is functional in bringing and holding layers together. During the course of my studies, I became unwell due to a combination of challenging personal circumstances. Since my topic was leaning more and more towards exploring the role of my body in my life and my Dalcross practice, my formal research came to a standstill. But I used this time to explore more philosophical questions. Through the non-verbal medium of stitching, I externalised my internal thinking as a way of processing and understanding. 
Externalizing is in order to clarify the internal is a key feature of Dalcro's practice, and so it was a familiar tool available to me. The process of making what I call a trellis, or in German Gitter, revealed a main theme within Dalcro's practice, that of structure or boundaries versus freedom. With improvisation, one of the three branches of Dalcro's arrhythmics, encapsulating an expression of both. Looking back, this was a significant moment of starting to see connections forming between my philosophical outlook, conceptual ideas and my personal Dalcro's experiences and understanding. But it was also a difficult time of beginning a journey of coming to terms with current and historic trauma. As my research developed, stitching came to signify repairing, integrating and restoring. As I read around the subject of trauma, pieces of my personal jigsaw began falling into place. Apart from the experience of often finding myself reading about myself, I was struck by Hill's body-mind theory, which to me resonates with Jacques Dalcroze's mission of integrating the mind and the body through his method. I was drawn back to Jacques Dalcroze's writings, and in particular to his 1919 essay on rhythm, time and temperament, within which, within which he engages with the sensorial, the emotional and the attuned aspects of life, which today are found within neurobiology and psychotherapy discourse. Kloninger, Drager, Skradich and Pisbeck's 1993 article, Psychobiological Model of Temperament and Character, offers a current framework for Jacques Dalcroze's discussion on character and temperament, which he regarded as dual aspects of the personality. Jacques Dalcroze believed, quote, the formation of character, close quote, to be the role of education and the essence of his work to specifically, quote, transmit improvements to the character, close quote, through rhythmic movement whereby the motor and nervous systems would be harnessed and so the temperament would regain its equilibrium, bringing it back to its true instinctive and spontaneous nature. In light of common shared language and principles found within affect regulation theory and Dalcroze's writings, I've been reflecting on the influence that the study of Dalcroze could have on restoring a dysregulated affect system, and also whether a dysregulated affect system could negatively impact one's training of Dalcro's eurythmics. I wonder what part my personal story can play in shedding light on these reflections. Another parallel development in my research is the story of the relationship of my body to the violin, my primary professional instrument. I am currently in the process of making collage pieces as a visual expression of this complex relationship, with a focus on the interplay between my own body and that of the violin that speak of a transition from constraint and trauma through to a place of restoration and freedom, which echoes the earlier trellis piece. These individual pieces may end up being combined to form a garment, continuing on the theme of embodying knowledge which began with the literature and piano capes and material shoes. As the focus of my study has become clearer, three concepts are emerging as significant. The self, play and space and place. I'm enjoying weaving threads across subject boundaries and engaging them in a dialogue with Dalcro's eurythmics. It offers a framework with which to scaffold my personal story. What is emerging through my research is the understanding that in order to enter into a dialogue with Dalcro's eurythmics, it is necessary to be comfortable within one's body, in order to be able to feel comfortable in one's environment and engage with the space, in order to be able to play, imagine and create. Awareness and integration are two key concepts in this process. 
Practicing Feldenkrais over many years since my Dalcross training has furthered my journey in both awareness and integration. The relationship between Dalcross and Feldenkrais practices is becoming another significant thread in my research. My hope is to revisit two creative pieces that I presented during two significant periods of Dalcross training. A choreography based on the Welsh myth of Blodeiwedd, a woman made from flowers, changed into an owl, from my licence qualification in 1999, and Tracing Stones, a piece created out in the Yorkshire Hills for my Diplôme Supérieur in 2013. Borrowing an idea from the choreographer, De choreographer Deborah Hay and her re-perspective of 2019, through revisiting, I hope to adapt, reframe and reimagine these creations in light of my research journey, maybe as a way of encapsulating and digesting the journey. As a final product, in keeping with a multi-layered approach to my research, I hope to produce three outputs. An exhibition in a gallery of the various artefacts that I've made to give people an opportunity to create their own somatic journeys. A website and an accompanying written thesis. So I shall keep you posted. Thank you very much for your attention and I will be happy to answer any questions.